Hi, my name is John and I enjoy making segmented bowls. Uh, I have been asked to put together a video on uh, making a bowl and of course it might take uh, 20 to 30 hours and so I've distilled that into uh, a series of videos totaling maybe 10 to 15 minutes um, which uh, include my favorite techniques. Now of course there's a lot of different ways to make bowls and uh, many of them will work just fine uh, but uh, uh, I put together uh, a series of videos that uh, I hope you enjoy, and um, let's uh, go ahead and get started. We start out with a plan to determine your ring height, width, and diameter, and then uh, you rip your boards. Uh, first thing I will do is cut out my base on the bandsaw, and I'll typically glue this onto a waste block and uh, mount that onto the lathe and get that rounded out. On this bowl, I have a feature ring of uh, maple, maple squares, so I take a bandsaw and uh, cut these maple segments. Uh, here are uh, 12 segments to a ring. And the segments dimensions need to be very precise, so careful cutting is in order here. My apologies for the loud background noise. To make the walnut circles, I used a drill press to drill the holes. And of course, uh, the location was carefully measured and marked prior to drilling. Drilling the holes, of course, is uh, pretty straightforward. Then placement of the uh, walnut dowels uh, was also uh, fairly simple. I just put a small dab of glue in each hole and uh, drove the dowel home. This bowl had several walnut rings, and I used the uh, wedgie sled to cut the segments, and then called the segments with the ring. The, uh, the width of the segment was determined by the bowl contour, as noted on the original plan, and I used uh, the small measuring jig you see to the left in order to measure the exact length. Keep in mind these angles have to be quite precise or you will end up with gaps in the wind. So after cutting those 12 segments, they are uh, placed in a circle just to make sure that uh, uh, it aligns perfectly with no gaps. And then uh, I personally like to stand the segments on end and throw a little glue on each one uh, as seen here. And then I'll uh, piece it together. And uh, my personal preference is to use the tourniquet style uh, as opposed to uh, the old uh, radiator clamp, which I you know tried in the past. But um, the tourniquet here, uh, works quite well. You can't quite see it, but I have a screwdriver off to uh, just outside of the picture to the right here that I use to uh, tighten the noose around all the segments. Um, this allows me to get uh, very tight segments uh, quite easily, and I can uh, adjust the, the size of the loop uh, easily between rings. And, um, you know, personally, I, I found that, that it works well for me.
I give the ring a good half hour to dry, and then I will sand it flat on one side using a beat drum sander that I assembled. Um, <clears throat> it might take uh, 5, 10, 15 runs of the sanding drum, but that's a, a pretty good job as long as we start out with a little flat one. shop for a standard drum sander so this works for me I then will uh, flatten the receiving edge uh, here I have the uh, base piece on the lathe and uh, I like to use my bull gouge to flatten the edge and you'll see here I'll put the gouge across it with a flashlight behind it in order to see if uh, it's perfectly flat and once you're very happy with it then it's <clears throat> ready to uh, put the sanding board on as seen here uh, really doesn't need more than uh, five or ten seconds with the, the board as long as you have it uh, nice and flat from your bowl gouge So once your receiving edge is perfectly flat and the uh, next ring is likewise uh, flat for sanding, then you can uh, glue them up. I like to just put a bead around it, uh, spread it around, and then I have a uh, simple wood press that I assembled here. And um, you don't need anything fancy. It doesn't need a huge amount of pressure, but uh, you just want to get these uh, opposed surfaces all in good contact. And I like to give it uh, oh, probably a, a good half hour in the press before I uh, consider uh, taking it out and, again, flattening uh, the next ring. I know some people like to glue up multiple rings at a time. Uh, well, since I'm limited with my uh, sander and I don't have a, a standard two-sided drum sander, uh, I just do rings one at a time. Next, uh, <clears throat> after each ring is glued on, um, uh, the piece is uh, placed back on the lathe, and uh, I use a, either a, a scraper or a bowl gouge to uh, round out the outside, uh, just to uh, get it uh, roughly rounded, and uh, most of the uh, fine contour work is done uh, at the end after all the rings are glued up. And so each successive ring is dealt with the same way. Uh, glued on, rounded out with a uh, scraper or bowl gouge. Not seen here, the inside of the bowl is also uh, smoothed over. The, um, the depths of the bowl down at the base, you really want to uh, get uh, smooth and sanded early on because uh, later on with the taller bolts, you're going to have more difficulty accessing it. And uh, I, I do like to have the inside of my bowl uh, finished as well as the outside. thin-walled vessels at all, uh, it's pretty nice to use a steady rest. Uh, once you get any significant distance from the headstock, there's a lot of vibration, and that's just not good. So I assembled mine using some old roller blade wheel. Uh, here I'm uh, smoothing out the uh, inside of the bowl, and um, you uh, want to take care of uh, the neck before you get down to the base in general. So once all you have all your rings assembled and the inside is smoothed out, time to uh, use your bowl gouge on the outside and get your final contour. Uh, you want to take your time here and take many passes so you can uh, minimize 
uh, your sanding. Uh, this is where uh, a little bit of compulsiveness really pays off because uh, once you uh, part it off, uh, that is your final contour and you can't change it. Next step, the finish is applied. Uh, I <laughs> have been through many different finishes. Uh, my current favorite is a dilute shellac friction rub, and um, this is uh, one third shellac, one third alcohol, and one third uh, boiled linseed oil. And um, you'll you'll see after application, I'll take a uh, fresh dry cloth and speed it up uh, as high as the lathe will go and basically uh, burn it off and it, it gives a pretty nice finish. So now it's time to part it off. Um, my current parting tool is a uh, kitchen knife from the dollar store which costs, you guess, uh, one dollar and it's, uh, it's nothing fancy but it does work and see here in a moment that'll pop right off so as long as you can uh, grip the bowl with your right hand uh, it's a pretty slick way to uh, remove it and just leaves a little uh, nubbin on the bottom so I do like to finish my uh, bowl bottoms so I'll reverse chuck it on a set of coal jaws and use the uh, bowl gouge to uh, clean off the bottom usually have a little uh, outside ridge, uh, just all personal preference here, but uh, I'll of course uh, sand it down and put a little finish down here as well. Um, but uh, it's nice to have a uh, uh, finished bottom to go with the rest of the bowl. <clears throat> Okay, that wraps it up. Uh, our bowl is now done. Uh, I call it the uh, Game Night Pretzel Bowl. And um, I haven't uh, counted a number of pieces in here, but uh, it's just a little over 100. It's uh, relatively straightforward, like I said, with uh, only uh, four rings on top of the base piece. And it, uh, I think, turned out okay. And uh, I hope all your bowls turn out well also. So, hope you enjoyed it.